Hi, I'm Tony Fleming, and this is Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us on today's car. You know, in the world of collectible cars, what makes them so collectible is this. First off, did they make a lot of them? Second of them, how original are they? Third, how well were they taken care of? And fourth, what is the restoration like? What can I expect out of this car? How will it feel to me to own this car? And that's kind of what I want to impart on you today is I want you to get a sense and a feel and a taste of this car. It's a spectacular car. It's a Mercedes 250 SE uh, Cabriolet. The SE offering you uh, the Bosch fuel injection. You know, this one here particularly has a lot, a lot of features on it and options. And we're gonna walk around and talk about that where this car, not only is it a collectible, a spectacular car for anybody's collection, but it has some real world items on it that you expect out of today's car, but this is, you know, uh, approaching the 50 year old mark and uh, was way ahead of its time. So for instance, uh, let's look at the galleon green paint. This right here, I'm sure I'm butchering the way it's supposed to be said because I don't speak uh, that language that well, but I wanna show you the quality of paint because that's what you need to see. Can you read all the letters in that, right? You guys are looking at pictures online, you're talking about cards with people, unless somebody's offering you to tell you what time it is in the paint, don't buy the car. They're hiding something. We're taking the time and effort. Now keep in mind, this is in HD, so we're showing you even more. Look how ridiculously unhandsome I am compared to this car. And the reason why is, in HD, that just happens to me. But in regular video, I'm like a supermodel, right? Okay, maybe not. Anyway, so because of the low production of this car and because the car was so expensive, keep in mind that these cars here were significantly, time, uh, significantly more expensive than the SL models, and they were the most expensive car that they sold to the general public. So they did not sell a lot of them, and they were very expensive, uh, and we'll go over the list price of that in just a minute because I have a lot of that information right here. Also, this is what you would expect to see if you came here to the store or we'll mail this to you uh, right after you purchase the car, okay? So a lot of hand-built pieces here and great style, but in mine was great style, but also elegance and safety. So for instance, this car here has optional power disc brakes. We talked about the fuel injection. The fuel injection is really nice because you hit the key, the car fires up and off you go. It doesn't care whether it's cold or hot outside. It doesn't need the carburetors to warm up and things like that. And it adds another level of elegance to the car. But look at the style of it. For instance, like the green with the tan leather. I mean, it is just, uh, uh, it's very much like the British might do on their cars too. Uh, Americans did it with the Corvette uh, in, the, in the Goodwood green and tan interiors there. The buckskin interior looks great. Let's keep walking around the car if we could for a minute because some of what you need to look for is fit and finish. For instance, what do the gaps look like in here and how consistent are they? How does this look? Does the door sag here? And the reason why we ask that is what's the underneath of the car look like? This car here looks great and I wanna show you that also, but it also says to me that Listen, look how easy. That's what you should be looking for in a car. This is not uh, a cobbled together car uh, looking for somebody to, to make a lot of money on. This is a car that's really part of somebody's collection or it could be your first car that you collect that you can go out in. This is a car that's livable daily if you wanted to, but more importantly, you could take another couple out, you could take the kids out, you could take it to school, to work, to golf, to whatever you want. Clubs fit in the back. It's got factory air conditioning in it. We talked about the power disc brakes. It has power steering, which was uh, you know uncommon on a lot of cars back in the day. Anyway, let's keep walking around the car for a second. Great looking dual exhaust. Nice features back here. Just enough chrome and trim to set the car apart. And as you look through the car, uh, once we get inside, that's when you'll see that it shines even more so. All right, let's keep rolling around the car for a second. You've got color matched stainless steel wheel covers. The wheels themselves are painted body color. And here's a good sign about a car when you're buying it. What kind of tires does it have? You say, well, what, what does it really matter what the tires are? But what matters is this. If the car was your baby, you're going to put the best tires you can on there. But if it's a car you were looking just to flip, just to get rid of, maybe the lease turn in or something like that, you're going to put the cheapest set of skins that you can get on there, right? Because you're getting rid of it. In this case here, we got the car, it had a beautiful set of Michelins on it. It runs and drives well with them. They're not period correct because they had belted tires back then. But what makes them so nice is they're the correct style with the white wall on there and their radials and they make the drive 50% better, all right? Okay, so uh, we talked a lot about details here, how great the paint was, how beautiful the trim was. Let's take a peek under the engine compartment so we can see uh, what are some of the motivating factors and why you might wanna get a car like this or in particular, this car. So uh, I pop the hood and then you will probably spend another 30 or 45 minutes looking for the latch. 
to get the hood open. I'm gonna show you so don't embarrass yourself after I embarrassed myself many a times with these cars. Uh, it takes you one time to not find the latch while you're talking to somebody and you get embarrassed. I'll show you where it is. It's hidden right up in here, okay? And boom. Of course, because now I've, I'm talking about it, I can't even get the hood over. I'm talking fast and I'm talking fast for a reason because I have so much to tell you but I don't want to lose your interest and I also don't want to uh, wear out uh, my welcome. But I want to show you a couple important factors here. Come up here and check. So when you're buying a car like this, you say to yourself, well, how do I know it hasn't been an accident? How do I know this car is even the real car? How do I know this wasn't a coupe cut with the top off? That is a great question or it's a question you maybe didn't even think to ask. As these cars become more and more expensive and the coupes are so much less expensive, right? People are gonna probably start cutting the tops off. I don't know if that's happened or not, but whatever. Anyway, here's some interesting things. Here's the codes depicting this car, just as it rolled off the, show, off the factory, showing in the colors that it's supposed to be, that it was a cabriolet, it has the upgraded fuel injection in it, it has air conditioning in it, which is awesome. Okay, here's the other tag here, the original tag with the VIN number. Um, and, uh, and the colors and things like that as well. The reason I'm bringing that up is, if this car had been in a collision along the way, this piece right here, you couldn't buy this tag anymore. They would have thrown that out because they would have had to weld in new stuff and they wouldn't have put this back on there. That's a really good sign. Here's another good sign. This car has a Mercedes battery in it. This Mercedes battery is three times the price of a regular battery. Why? No reason, just because it says Mercedes on it and that's the kind of detail that you're getting here. Everything's painted nicely. Uh, the air cleaner system is detailed, the throttle system is nice and detailed, okay? The fuel injection unit has been rebuilt, okay? That's an important question to ask. It's got power steering, coils in the right place, what well, we talked about power disc brakes as well. Nicely insulated up there so that when you drive this car, it makes a really nice sound uh, out the tailpipe, but you don't get all the heat on your feet and things like that. This is a luxury car, man. Keep in mind, it was very expensive for its time. All right, let's check out this, the trunk. This is really a nice piece. So uh, this is an original boot, okay? I went ahead and ordered a new boot because first off, uh, this is just faded over time. Um, I was told it's the original boot. I don't know for sure, but uh, let me, yeah, date coded snaps. No, not 67 snaps though, just kidding. Anyway, come on in here, check this out, okay? This might be pretty cool uh, because what you're getting is uh, a real look at what an original trunk might look like. Everything's in its place. This is another boot, but in black. This is a trunk mat, detailed spare tire and jack, everything all in there. The original stickers up in here in the trunk for jacking instructions in German and in English. It's kind of cool. And it's a nice size trunk, meaning you can throw a lot of stuff in there and, uh, and go cruising, okay? Okay, so in here, this is where a lot of time and money is spent on these cars. All right, so for instance, like, check out the wood in this car. It is spectacular. Look at this carved piece of wood. Somebody had to make this, right? All the wood trim around here and how great it is. It's in great, great shape. Here's what I will offer you this. I have a correct vintage style uh, Mercedes uh, radio that I'd like to install back in the dash in here. And what I'd like to do for you is install an AM FM CD sound system in here, okay? hidden out of the way so we could keep the dash authentic if you'd like that to, me to do that for you, because I would really like to. Another great sign about a car in a restoration, the glove box light works. You have to say to yourself, well, what's the big deal about the glove box light working? Well, the truth of the matter is 40 and 50 years later, a lot of this stuff does not work. And in this case here, a little something that's working really nicely. Okay, air conditioning unit, 160 mile an hour speedometer. They th obviously thought that these cars had good power, otherwise, otherwise they put in what was typical of American cars, 120 mile an hour speedometer, even in like muscle cars. Uh, 7,000 RPM TAC with a 6,500 RPM red line, all right? Full factory gauges, including uh, oil pressure, water temperature, and things like that. And just to trim, like check out this vent. Like who builds this? Some craftsman makes this vent. That's just one cool piece. Either way, the car also has power windows, power steering we talked about, and the famous <laughs> Mercedes horn, right? Just a cool, cool car, man. Check out the interior, man, this is beautiful. This has all been redone. All new leather, door panels, carpets. Uh, we had the cocoa mats made for this car, and they look really nice, came out great. Just everything in here looks wonderful. Just 
nice. This is just a cool car to drive. I don't know why I get so excited about it, but man, it's just got style. And anytime you find something with style that you don't see all the time, it makes for a really nice vehicle. How about I go ahead and start it for you so you can hear how great it sounds. Nice. Smooth. Idles there. Once it warms up, it comes right on down. Listen, we're going to close up this video. I talked a lot about uh, maybe the, the vehicle itself, but uh, we also talked a lot about the accoutrements that come on something like this and maybe the options that they were. So this car was probably even more expensive than most of the other cars out there. We talked about uh, optional power disc brakes, uh, optional air conditioning, uh, power steering, which was standard, but uh, things like uh, the color matched wheels, Michelin tires. Uh, all new interior. It's just, uh, and the same owner for a really long time. We got some great uh, information about that. The owner lives local here, and uh, if you have some questions that, uh, that maybe we can't answer, I could always call him and ask him for you. But uh, uh, I have a feeling that uh, you find a way to get this car in your life, and uh, you'll enjoy it the same length of time that he did, which I think is just awesome. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you how to get this 67 250 SE Cabriolet in your garage.